I made a video in my old kitchen a couple years ago about less expensive Dutch oven options and it was before I had a really good camera or a microphone and you can't hear anything I'm saying. So <laughs> I'm re-recording this video about less expensive Dutch oven options, how to take care of them and if it's worth the money. Um, even though they're less expensive, they're still expensive pots. So I wanted to go into how people have the Le Creuset pot or a Staub pot and um, I desperately wanted one for so many years and I finally got one and I loved my pot. I had these Tramantina pots for a little bit longer than I've had the Le Creuset pot and now after owning both I can honestly say the Tramantina is just as good and you get more bang for your buck so you could buy three or even four pots for the price of one of these bad boys. And I've used Cuisinart and I've used the enameled Lodge Pot. Um, Tramantina is my favorite. The reason why is look at their website. Go to Dutch Ovens. Once you click there, there's so many different sizes, colors, shapes. They have oval and round. And look at those prices. You can't beat that. These I've had for, I don't know five or six years, and they've held up really, really well. They're enameled on the inside, they're enameled on the outside. You can get a variety of different colors, like I said, in different sizes. And this is a two-pack I got that you can buy. I think I got this at Sam's Club, but they have it on Costco as well. It's $69.99 for a seven quart and a four quart two-pack. That's insane. <laughs> This pot, this Le Creuset pot, was $360. I did not pay that price. I um, got it on like a Black Friday sale or something, so I didn't spend full price on this. But that's just insane to me. If you go onto the Tramantina website, a similar size, five and a half quart round Dutch oven, um, it comes in four different colors, is $79 as opposed to $360. So, if you cannot stomach buying a Le Creuset or a Staub, then I absolutely 100% recommend buying a Tramantina pot. It is really good quality and it will last you just as long as this pot. All you're paying for here is the name, honestly, and maybe a few more color choices. So <laughs> if you can afford to buy a Le Creuset pot, by all means, go for it. And if you're struggling about whether or not to splurge on this or to just buy the Tramantina, go for the Tramantina. Do it. I promise you, you will not regret it. So I have different sizes and you're probably wondering why. Um, so I did have a six and a half quart Tramantina and I ended up giving it to my sister when I bought the Le Creuset because this is five and a half quarts, it's close enough and I didn't need two of them. Um, so the, I'll start with the four quart. The four quart is perfect for small soups, or smaller batches of soups, but what I love this size for is for Dutch oven breads. And I will link my favorite Dutch oven bread recipe below. It makes two loaves, and they look like artisanal bread you would buy from a really nice bakery, and they taste that good too. I cook them all the time in this size Dutch oven. You could definitely cook those breads in a larger Dutch oven. The problem is when the bread goes into the hot, pre-heated um, pot, the dough will spread out. And if you have a larger pot, the bread will just be thinner and it won't be quite as thick and big as it is in a smaller pot. So this is the thing I use this pot for the most, is the Dutch oven bread. So there you go. The seven quart pot, why you would ever want something this big, I wondered if I would use it, and I do actually use it a lot. So this pot is really, big and wide and it has a lot of surface area and I actually use it now more than I do my old cast iron pot, pan because it browns things really really well and because it's so wide on the bottom I can fit eight pieces of chicken in here I can fit a big pot roast in here and I don't have to like scrunch it up and make it fit it fits wonderfully in here and it browns meat amazingly. I also love to use this size pot when I'm making homemade donuts because they fry up. I can put a bunch in here at one time. So this is a great option for that. 
It's also, if you're making a big batch of soup, you can put a whole chicken in here and two quarts of water. Um, and it works really, really well. So that's why I have the large size and I do actually use it quite often. Now a five and a half quart or a six and a half quart is kind of your wheelhouse. If you can only buy one, I would go with this size of a pot. It will cook pretty much everything you can throw at it. Um, it can do the Dutch oven bread, but it's not too wide. It could do, um, you know, medium sized batches of soups. It can boil your pasta. It can fry your donuts. I mean, you can do literally everything. So if you're only going to get one pot, then I would do a five and a half or a six and a half quart pot. If you can splurge for one over the other, if you're big into bread, I would go for the four quart. And if you're more of a braiser or a meat cooker, I would go with the larger seven quart if you just want to. So here are instructions. So for the Le Creuset, you just have to wash it with warm water and dry it and then you're ready to go. There's no seasoning needed at all on the um, cast iron. Now on the Tramontina, you do need to season these. You do not have to do anything to the enamel part, but you'll see on the lid and on the top of the pot, that's where the cast iron is exposed. And so you would treat this just like any other cast iron pot. So all you do is use a little cooking oil. This is just olive oil and I dip my finger in you don't need much, you just need a little bit. And you just run your finger over the exposed cast iron. And you wanna do this with your finger, not with a paper towel, because the paper towel will leave residue behind. So just coat the edge of the lid all the way around. It doesn't take much. And you wanna coat the edge of your pot just like that. And if any drips down, feel free to use a paper towel to clean off the enamel. It's not gonna hurt anything. And then all you do is seal it up and you're gonna put it into a 350 degree oven for about an hour. That just seasons and seals this cast iron and protects it. It's not a huge deal if you didn't do it when you first got your pot or didn't realize you needed to do it. Your pot is fine. It just protects your cast iron and makes it last for a lot longer. Now, if you're thinking that that's too much of an extra step for the price, you're wrong. It's so easy. It's not hard. Now, a lot of people um, had come, oh, see, I'm preheating my oven so I can season this bad boy. Occasionally, over the years, every like once a year or so, you might want to re-season it or if you um, wash it with a uh, detergent, you might want to re-season it. So some people have complained about um, their Dutch ovens getting um, on the enamel part, getting like these brown spots. That's just from cooking. It's not permanent. Um, someone commented in one of my old videos that when they did the olive oil on the edge, it dripped down and it got brown on the edge. That's an easy fix. So to clean your pot, you can use um, just a detergent and a sponge. Now, if things get caked on like that brown, the easiest thing I've found to get it off is a, um, this is a Scotch-Brite pad. It does not have steel in it at all. Do not ever use metal on your pot. Please don't do that. It'll ruin them. Um, but this is just a slightly abrasive um, kind of sponge. So it's basically, Scotch-Brite is like when you have a sponge and you have that um, part on the top that's harder, that's what this is. And this is just a, just a pad, get it wet, and then you just follow the, the um, circular motion in the pot. And it'll take all that brown off. I just do it in some water with a little bit of dish soap. It works great. You can also use a sponge. This is a scrunch. So this is just an abrasive um, coating on the top, but it, again, does not have any metal of any kind. It's non-scratch, so it won't scratch your lid, but it gives you just enough of an abrasive nature to kind of get it off. If something is really caked on and I really cannot get it off and I've tried everything else, I'll use a little barkeeper's friend um, on my pot just a little bit and one of these pads and then I'll get it right off. So um, I try not to do that often though, but anyway. So when you cook with these, you don't want to use metal. 
because um, that will scratch the enamel interior. So you want to use silicone, which is fantastic. This is a Sapoon from Dream Farm. I love that one. Um, wood. This is olive wood, and I love using olive wood on my, it's just, I don't know, just something very nice about olive wood utensils. Um, if I use tongs, I love these OXO tongs. I have them in full metal, but they have them with the plastic coating on the end, and that will also protect your pots. So make sure that you use that kind of a utensil. Uh, now, for cooking with these pots, people like have wrongly said that you can't use these pots on a um, induction stovetop, and that's not true. You absolutely can. These are rated, all of these, in fact, you can use on an induction stovetop. Um, you can use them on gas and electric as well, obviously. But with induction, the only thing I recommend, because I my old house was induction, um, is just when you go to move the pot, just lift it instead of um, scooting it across, because you could scratch the induction. I never did, um, but I would just recommend just lifting and placing, but it works just as well as a gas stove top. Now, if you're going to cook out onto a grill of a charcoal variety or gas even, or an open flame outside, that's when I would recommend a non-enameled Lodge, just cast iron Dutch oven. The Lodge has, or sorry, Lodge has Dutch ovens that are just black cast iron, they're not enameled, those pots are perfect for that use. So I hope that this video helps make your decision easier. I know that I went back and forth, I could not stomach spending that much money on this pot for a long time, and then I finally did, and I'm happy I did, I appreciate my pot, but after using it, I realized that these are just as good, and all you're really paying for is the name. Now I will say with the Le Creuset pot, if you're going to do a lot of oven braising, check whether you have the signature or the classic um, style pot. These, you can replace these knobs on top with, they have gold and they have silver, and it's really easy. You just use a flathead screwdriver, unscrew it, and you can screw on the new knob. They sell them online, at the outlet store, in a regular um, store. But these are the phenolic, 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 I don't know how to say it, but anyway. These are phenolic black knobs. On the classic range of pots, it is only good in the oven up to 390 degrees. On the Signature Series, it's good for 500 degrees. What makes it different? I don't know, because you would think it's the same knob for both pots, but just check. If you have a classic, you might want to switch it out for a metal knob, like one of these. Um, and if you have the signature, then don't even worry about it. But I've never had an issue with this knob in my oven because this is a signature series. So there you have it. There's my 411 on cooking with Dutch ovens and choosing the right one for you. And just know that if you do end up with a Tramontina, it's a great pot. You should be really happy and excited to use it for all different things.